So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and pull them out first. Um, Who you pulling on, out? I'm gonna pull out Hero. Hero. Yeah, so I have him on lead. I let my cousin uh, fire a couple rounds first, kind of get Hero warmed up, let him know what Oh, we first doing. off, where we at? I mean, you got me out here in the middle. Where we at, Iraq? It feel like, it's like we in Waikiki. Yeah, we... So we about 20, 20 miles outside of Dallas. Got you. Yeah, so we'll go ahead and let him get warmed up. Then after the warm up, then I'll go ahead and um, put in some work with Hero. Pretty muddy today, so give us another different element than we used to. But I mean, another day to put in some work. It's really muddy, man. You gotta mess up my Tim's out here. Hey, welcome you to lucky Texas. We're not in New York. Lucky, We're lucky, Boston. lucky I love you. Mike Mongo, or call me Mizzle. Tone Jones on the instrumental. We like Jay and Just. Jay and Just. You other dudes are sorry, we done heard enough Now let me make this clear, I'm out the gate to switch the gears Cause of what's happening now and beyond next year We can't debate it cause your skills are unrelated They'll dub me the most loved, but also the most hated uh, Cause this is you don't know, because you're Broughtwaller Vlogs, episode 143. Mizzle and Mag back at it with my man Maurice Farnby at DFW Dog Life. This episode is dope. Talking about a little tactical training with the world's best breed, the Rottweiler. Y'all kick back and relax. And as always, enjoy the content. I'm Maurice Farnby. I'm owner of DFW Dog Life. I have with me my boy Hero right here. Hero is imported from Serbia. Hero originally was the breeder's keeper puppy, but he had an injury to his tail, which caused them to have to amputate it. And that led to them selling the dog, you know, here to the United States. Um, I wanted to get another male after I got my boy Mancho. Um, I was looking for a male that could do more work, so to speak, or do more protection work. So I was just looking for something different, which, you know, it kind of led me to Hero. Once I got him, I noticed how smaller he was compared to some of the other males and how much smaller he was than Mancho. So, you know, rather than that being a problem or a con, I just wanted to use him in a way that his size could be an asset. He is my personal protection dog. Um, now, I know some of the things that I do with him can kind of venture out outside of personal protection. But more than anything, my goal for him is for him to be able to handle all aspects of my lifestyle. So, although, you know, you guys saw him performing with the gunfire, in reality, that was really not us training. That was just me working my dog and exposing him to different elements outside of the actual training floor. So... If I was to say what's my ultimate goal, my ultimate goal is just to be able to have a dog that can handle all different um, aspects of my lifestyle. One thing my trainer, master trainer P. Don Mega taught me was to not worry about what everybody else was doing. Not to focus on you know the different training videos that I see on the internet or what someone else is doing with their dog. I focus on my lifestyle and the things that I want my dog to be able to handle. So that's what I, you know, those are the things that I put my dog through. Um, I was raised with um, a lot of military family members, hence my dad and my brother and a lot of my uncles and cousins, they were all in the military. I was probably the only person who didn't necessarily go to the military, but being raised around them led me to have you know a passion for weapons and weapon handling so i feel like you know weapons is part of my lifestyle and it's something that i enjoy so that's something that i want my dog to be able to handle and that's something that i want my dog to be able to come and you know participate with me also with hero hero's really at the point where i'm not technically still training him i like where hero's at it's really at the point where it's about me it's about me getting better um, with weapon handling. It's about me getting better with my footwork. Um, the dog can only be as good as I am. So I'm really at the point where I'm using Hero as practice to get better for myself so that when a couple of my other dogs are ready and they're of age, I'm a better version of myself to, to help 
my dogs be better. Um, I do have a couple Belgian Malawas that um, I'm getting ready to, to prepare. And when they're ready, that's my ultimate goal for the weapons handling and you know more security style protection training is with my Malawas. I just feel like if I can do this, this style of training and I can practice and getting better at myself with a breed that is not necessarily the best candidate, then it'll make it that much better when my mouths are ready if I can do it with a Roddy. This is an option for my dream dog. I do have a couple other dogs that I am socializing with gunfire and you know get preparing them to be able to handle these same style of situations for clients. So if you are interested in a dog, you know, an older dog that can handle being around gunfire and this sort of style training, that is an option for my dream dog. Got you. And for those watching, my dream dog is a program that is offered here at DFW Dog Life where um, he has a variety of different breeds uh, for consumers to choose from in that you train and um, you actually pair the dogs with um, personalities of the different people in the lifestyle that they live, correct? Absolutely. So whether you want an older dog, you want a puppy, you want a dog with, you know, trained for various reasons it's all about your idea of a dream dog whatever your version of a dream dog is to you that's how we prepare the dog and that's how we get the dog ready um, i have a dog that i imported for a client from romania he, that client is actually in a wheelchair so he he informed us that he really wanted a protection dog but you know he didn't know where to be able to get one um, especially one that could be suitable for him in a wheelchair. So I imported the dog, we put the dog through training, um, we did the protection work, and then the owner came down. We spent time with the owner preparing him and teaching him how to handle the dog. And two weeks later, away from us, he said it felt like that the dog was his ever since birth. So whatever your version of, of your dream dog, we would get the dog ready for it. How do you feel watching your son, watching your brother doing what he's doing now with DFW Dog Life? Because, you know, he's come a long way from, um, what's the name of the town y'all lived in? Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant. Come a long way from Mount Pleasant in Roscoe, Correct. right? Correct. So and we, we put a clip of Roscoe in uh, when Farm View was about one and a half or so in, in, in this video. So uh, how is it seeing him all these years later? I mean, as far as myself, I just feel uh, very proud, of course, uh, seeing him being, being able to do something that he's very passionate about. Um, there's no question that he loves the dogs and that, that he loves what he's doing. Um, a lot of times he'll call me on the phone and I can, he's got a lot going on in the facility and I can barely hear. So uh, to be able to put yourself in that environment every day and uh, come out uh, as passionate as he is about it, I, I, you have to love it. So uh, I feel a lot of pride for him and um, I, I think this is only just the beginning for him. Uh, he has a lot of, lot of plans and a lot of different ideas of, of where to take it from here. So uh, I'm definitely proud of him. Right. Now you, Mr. Marvin, you yourself, you are very passionate about dogs as well and you've had Rottweilers and you've had other breeds as well? For, for the most part, I had Rottweilers. Of course, growing up, I, I had different dogs um, that were just more pet dogs um, that was given to us by, by other um, co-workers or family members that were more like uh, mixed breed dogs that stayed outside and just did what they did, run around out in the country. And, and uh, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of training with them, but you still, you still intermingled with them and, and gave them a lot of attention, but there wasn't necessarily a, a specific breed that you were into. So, right. Uh, I guess the the Rottweilers was a, the, specifically the, the breed that right. I uh, first became passionate about. Well, why why Rottweilers? Why did you get passionate about the Rottweilers? I know they're extremely popular late '80s, going into the early '90s. So Correct. you know, there's a little bit of that. But was there something else more to it with that? Um, not really. I mean, it, it was for the most part that it was. Uh, uh, the setting was about, I would say, 93 or so, so definitely early 90s. Um, Rottweilers were very, very popular in, at that time. Um, I, I liked the markings, 
I like the physical makeup of the dog. Uh, honestly, at the time, I, I didn't know a lot about them as far as um, you know their history and uh, what they came, where they came from, and, and what they were all about. But I just knew I, I liked the dog's uh, physical characteristics, and, and um, of course, started to learn more about them after that. Right. Well, your son is the plug. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever see yourself getting back involved with the breed in any capacity? Um, that's a question that I've asked myself uh, several times. Uh, at this point, um, I'm still neutral. I, I don't know. Um, it's uh, it's not something that I can answer yes or no, just because you know you don't know where life's going to take you. Um, but I will say, uh, having been uh, on the side of the breeder side and everything, I do know how much work it takes. So that's that's definitely, uh, you know, something that would make you pause and hesitate. But um, at the same time, I do continue to have the passion for the breed, so I can definitely not say uh, no. So, right. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Keeping the options open. Exactly. Mike, you um, military background. You love doing tactical things. You firearms. We saw you out there working today. Um, ultimately, is this your goal to do more with? combining the tactical work and then um, with the dog training and stuff like that? Uh, I'm open to it. Um, I don't know necessarily too much about dogs. Uh, we use dogs a lot on deployments downrange Africa. Uh, just got back from Iraq. We had dog handler in Iraq was awesome. They're a pivotal part to tactics, but me personally, I think I would like to stay more on the gun side and uh, master that at least first before I try to hop over to something uh, because I like to be the best at everything. Right. So if I'm only good at shooting and only good at being a dog handler, that's probably not going to be good enough for me. Right. And I, I didn't say this to both of you guys. We appreciate your service. Thank you. I uh, appreciate it. And um, so where have you been deployed to? I've uh, been to uh, Africa, uh, Eastern Africa once, been to Northern Africa once, been to Iraq once, uh, been to some other countries in the Middle East, uh, been to some countries in Europe. Uh, recently uh, that are on the news quite often right yeah. so out there you're seeing the dogs out there in the field are you seeing any rottweilers out there or are you seeing more malinois uh, a lot of malinois a lot of german shepherds uh, personally i've never seen a rottweiler in the field um, I, I think that's more of a an acquired taste what's your um your long-term plans as far as um your training going to do any group training for your tactical stuff or um, me and my brother, we talked about uh, some brainstorming opportunities, you know, working uh, dogs with guns, and but that's going to be more set on owners that that like both of those settings at once and that see it as a pivotal role and knowing how to use your dog as a weapon and then turning yourself into a weapon. Got you. Well, I appreciate you, and I appreciate all three of you guys taking the time and inviting me out to see what you guys do. Um, I'm pretty sure people are going to enjoy watching this. Um, it's very interesting. Um... You know, I, I think there's a lot that goes into what you do with tactical training and then just combining the canine aspect of it just opens up to a, a whole different world. So you, you have to have a lot of patience and a, a lot of um, a lot of skill to be able to know where your dog is at, know where you're trying to hit your markers. And just that's just me picking up on it from what I've seen filming you guys today. So um, I commend you. I think that's awesome. How can we uh, people get in contact with you? Instagrams, websites, anything like that? Yeah, so you can contact us at on Instagram at dfw underscore dog life, and that's dog d a w g life. We're on Facebook at dog life also, and you can also call us at 469-886-8003. Okay. Mike, you got Instagram or anything like that? Uh, Mike X Lamar on Instagram. Awesome. Mr. Marvin, you, you, no no social media, right? No social media. All right. Cause Off the grid. They, that's all right. Exactly. My man. <laughs> well, I appreciate y'all taking the time. And um, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. All right. So this is bonus footage. And this might be the first time that we've had bonus footage. But you guys are demanding that we put a... a and into a debate. Well, it was uh, the who, one that who's, you. who's the best shooter out of the three of you? Now, you. now, do note, I have it on camera. I have it on camera. But the floor is yours. Who's the best shooter? 
I'll let them answer first. I'll let, go ahead. Tactical shooting, I give it to myself. I'll give them long range. So you're the best at tactical shooting? Absolutely. Your pops is better at long range. Yep. Do you agree with that? I would I would agree with that. Uh, you know, just like uh, in the dog game, you know, shooting is the same thing. It's different disciplines. Uh, so Michael likes uh, tactical shooting, and uh, my thing is uh, long range. So, uh, of course, Michael puts more time in the tactical shooting, just like I put more time into long range shooting. So uh, who's the best? At the end of the day, I think it comes down to who puts the most time into that discipline. So you you do long range shooting with a group, don't you? I do. Okay. I thought I, I heard uh, Fumby mention that you did it with a group. And so you the best at what? I'm just the best. Okay. You the best I'm, at dog handling. I'm just gonna put it like this: I've never lost to either one in a competition because he never came. He never showed <laughs> okay, up. he never showed well, up. That's in, the, in the footage that you'll see today, I think it'll be very obvious who's better than him. Okay. But, I mean, I will give it to these guys. Um, I feel like my love and interest for it stem from them. So, since we're on camera, I can't say that they're better, but I can't say that I'm better. So, we're just going to leave it at that. Okay. All right. Enough said. Enough Thank said. you.